Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the analysis of Yolando TV. I hope you're well from whatever you're watching this channel. I'd like to start this session by appreciating you so much for making this channel grow. If you wish to support us, just subscribe to our channel and give this video a like. I don't know how many of you were glued on your screens during the Sunday live. The interview that was held between the Royal Media Services, Director Linus Kaikai, and Francis Mudaura, Ambassador Francis Mudaura, who is the former head of public service, who served under Mwai Kibaki's Senna. If you were glued on your screens during that interview, you must have realized what Francis Mudaura said about the PEV, the post-election violence, and the events that led to the post-election violence. During that time, there was some growing concerns about the power struggle between Francis Mudaura and Raila Molodinga, who was the prime, prime minister back then. And according to the agreement between Mwaikibaki, Raila Odinga, which was chaired by Kofi Annan, the former UN secretary, Raila was to have almost equal powers with Kibaki. But because of the constitution back then, there are some, some roles which the president back then had to execute. Roles which made him still be senior. But Raila Molodinga was almost of the equal rank to the president. In short, they split the government into two. Thereby forming the government of national unity, or rather you can say the coalition government. So I want to take you to the debate, to the interview uh, there. And then that interview was dubbed the enforcer in chief. And Linus Kaikai chose to have that interview, uh, I think days before the launch of uh, the former ambassador Francis Mudaura's book titled A Moving Horizon. And it's a leak that in that book, Raila Molo Ringa Odinga has featured immensely. So that's why when history is written, Raila's name will always be mentioned. So I want us to focus more on what Francis Mudaura said. If you're observant, and if you had not observed, if not watched that interview, I will share some bits uh, from uh, a segment I took from what uh, Mudaura was being asked, the questions then. From, yeah. tell, us, tell us more, Ambassador Mudaura, because yeah. I remember the context of that conversation when politicians were having a problem with the position of head of public service. Yes. It was during the Grand Coalition yes. government where you sat in a very unique position as head of public service yes. in an administration that had a president and had a prime minister. Yes. How did that work for you? Who was your boss? Well, initially, initially the, there was a lot of fear that um, the, pump, the, the head of public service was usurping the powers of the prime minister. Uh, but after a while, when we started working with uh, Honorable Rai Rodinga, we became very good friends. He realized that I was, I was there to serve him, to help him succeed, to push his agenda. And uh, of course the Prime Minister is also pushing the cabinet agenda, the government agenda, not personal agenda. Um, so we, you know, the fears which were there were actually initial. They were very initial. But later on, um, I think uh, even the Prime Minister, valued the office of the head of public service. And if you looked at how Linus Kakai was uh, asking uh, the former uh, public service, the head of public service, then you will realize that those questions, most of them, as it was a man, Kwachini. So it was just based on what they were talking about, the responses which were given there. And this is just like how or Jeff Koinangeza way of interviewing then most of the time he doesn't have the questions written so he always just asked and based on how you respond he will 
form another question from the response. So that is what uh, I could detect in Linus Kaikai's way of interviewing Francis Mudaura. It was pretty professional, pretty mature, and uh, it was not one-sided, but it was something that was uh, also well-organized. So Mudaura spilled the beans, and he talked about how at one particular time they appear to be some supremacy war between Raila and, uh, and, 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 and Francis Mudaura. And that particular time, he said that that matter was addressed. But if you also were observant back then, there was a lot of tension, especially with the people who were surrounding Mwai Kibaki. And Francis Mudaura was one of those people surrounding Mwai Kibaki. They did not want to allow Mwai Kibaki to seed to cede even a single role to Raila Molodinga. That's the reality. Despite the fact that this interview sought to explain certain things, but the reality is that the people who were surrounding Mwai Kibaki didn't want Mwai Kibaki to cede even a single role to Raila Molodinga. Also, if you are observant back then, 2007, the skirmishes and the like, there was a lot of hard line position from uh, Mwai Kibaki's uh, faction. Despite the fact that in this interview, Francis Mudaura says that uh, they were ready to have a sit down with Raila Molodinga to have a, a, a coalition government formed with Raila Molodinga. They said that they were ready. But if you looked at even the time Kofi Annan was in the country, there was a lot of hardline position from the people of Mwai Kibaki's uh, faction. And uh, unfortunately, back then, uh, Mata Karua was still part of uh, Mwai Kibaki's faction. But then, if you're also observant enough, then you must have realized that Kofi Annan, in his own Solomonic wisdom, realized that the best thing to do is to, to have convene a meeting of three people, Raila himself and Mwai Kibaki. Then they can break the ice there. So I think that is what Kofi Annan chose to do in his own Solomonic wisdom. A uh, move which worked and uh, that's a move that saw the government have a 50-50 uh, share whereby Raila could take 50% 50 and uh, Kibaki took 50%. But still, ilikuwa Kibaki atakuwa powerful than Raila. Because if you can't control the army, can't control the police, then you can never be powerful. But if you can't control even the police, then this, akin to what is happening in Sudan, then if you can control the police, then that means utakuwa na say kubwa sana in matters of uh, administration and, and, and decisions. So, back then, what helped Raila Molodinga the most was the fact that he had taken over the parliament. The speaker of the parliament was an ODM person, Kenneth Marende, who was also full of Solomonic wisdom. And you remember there's a time there when uh, there was some tussle over an appointment, I think, of a, a certain committee member. Is it a budget, budget committee? But there was a committee. And, and because Raila and Kibaki had not agreed, Kenneth Moran decided that I'm going to hold that position until you agree. So when the time you agree, I will relinquish the position to that person whom you shall have agreed upon and given up. So that time, Marende was a bit Solomonic in how he, you know, he, he made decisions and uh, he managed to contain, he realized that he was the person now that Kenyans needed. And Marende, if at all, right now, Wetango would have played the role of Marende back then. Then I think at the IFA Finance Act, Peter, because he could have taken it back, said that this thing is not supported by Kenyans. So look for a plan B. That could have been the best thing for Kenyans. But look at what we have. We have someone who is only biased and relying and only championing the government agenda. So not realizing that the 2010 constitution gave parliament mandate ya kuamua, not to be controlled. One is amua. Just like the judiciary can uh, can make a decision about government, about high support government. But right through what we have right now is a parliament that is only working for the government, for the executive. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, what do you make from what Francis Mudaura said in that interview? Do you agree with him? Kindly tell us below the comment section whether you agree with Francis Mudaura or if or you don't, or whether you think some of the things he's saying there, Nivito Ambazo has kufanyi huo. So maybe he's just trying to uh, vindicate himself. Just tell us below the comment section. To those who are not subscribed to this channel, I would like to kindly request you take one second, go there before the comment section. There is a button written and subscribe. Just hit it once if you're not subscribed before. And then there's a button uh, with this symbol, thumbs up. Just hit it. It's so important if you give this video a thumbs up because now YouTube get to share it to other audiences within uh, the YouTube platform. Uh, people are not part of our audience. They will get to share, get this video and then our audience will increase. So to those who have supported this channel by either subscribing or always giving our videos a thumbs up, I want to say that I'm forever grateful because without that support, this channel cannot grow. So until you catch up again, please stay safe and stay blessed.